my parents clocked in and clocked out. We're salaried employees. They squirreled away all the money they could. They made in, you know, they, they had vested, you know, they had 401ks. They had all these, everything that was there. And it was more about the saving part of it that, that I learned from them and, and really the delayed gratification of what investing should, should feel like. You know, this isn't a casino. This is planting seeds. And that's really what I got out of it. But I learned as I got older and I learned as I started to make money was the difference between an asset, you know, that can, or a cash flowing asset versus just like bonds and equities and things that are just for later, like things that you can put in a SEP and don't have, I don't even want to see it. Don't even tell me about it. I'm just going to give you money and you put it in the SEP and I trust my advisor kind of thing versus like something like real estate. So every, every red cent that I made in track and field, I bought Austin real estate. I bought my home. I bought rental properties. I bought stuff that I knew when I retired or when, the, when my, my abilities were gone and no one was going to pay me to run track anymore. I didn't have to run out and get a job. I didn't have to run out and, and start trying to figure it out while also needing money to support my family. And so that was my... You know, my big aha moment is I, I won a medal in 2009 and I use that capital as a down payment, uh, like the, the cash bonus you get from, you know, a sponsor as a down payment for my first house and lived there only like two and a half, three years uh, before I built my next house with my future wife uh, and we kept the old one and that was the rental property. That turned me on to an entire, I was like, oh my, wait okay, you mean the renter's paying my note. I can write off the interest. And in like 10 years, we're going to be this far down the, the schedule of the mortgage and there's interest or inflation induced debt destruction and all of these byproducts of, and, uh, oh, and when I buy, you know, mulch for this house and there's some left over, I can use that mulch in my house and still write it off in this LLC. All of the benefits of this stuff was just, it blew my mind. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to buy anything else for myself. I'm going to buy more single family rentals in Austin, Texas. And I mean, anybody that was buying single family houses in Austin, Texas in the last 30 years looks like a flipping genius. And, and so, yeah, that afforded me the ability to, to go to business school. I went back, uh, paid tuition to business school, didn't have to, you know, worry about where money was coming in from. And it just, the, those lessons from my parents of just sowing seeds and, and just working at stuff so that when the time came, I needed it. I had it. And that, that's kind of, that's, that's where I'm coming from. You know, that's incredible. And by the way, you would have done well in any market uh, with that strategy, but it's a good thing you picked Austin, Texas, because you yeah. have had some exponential return on those homes since you started investing. I mean, it's, yeah. this is a boom economy. And I know you just built a gorgeous new home here uh, this past yeah. year. Uh, which is exciting. And so I, you know, it, it's cool seeing what you've been able to build and instead of uh, frivolously spending that you're intentionally buying assets that produce income. That is music to my ears. It's what I love teaching people. Um, so well done. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder though. Now that we're kind of, we're set up and we're okay. It's getting really, really hard to keep that discipline. I'll say that. There was one, like when the Tesla Model X came out, we had it like we were read, we had it for like the three day long weekend uh, test drive. And it was like, OK, this is the one we're going to go back and buy this. And I went I was at the dealership or at the, the, you know, the showroom and we're talking and I'm like, nah, yeah, we could finance this or we could uh, we should put money down. I don't know. Let me I'll be right back. And I went and I got a Starbucks coffee at the domain and I called my wife and I'm like, hey, we're not going to get this car. She's like, what? Why? This is, it's, it's literally my dream car. Now the cyber truck's the dream car, but like, it's literally the dream car that we wanted. And I was like, no, there's, there's a duplex on Knuckles Crossing that I think we could get for this. And she's like, okay. And there, there was no argument. She just goes, okay. Cause she saw what, what we were doing and what we were building. And that thing, instead of, you know, that thing could have paid for two Model X's in the cash flow that it gets. Um, we ended up, we liquidated it just last year to build this beautiful home. But like, it was, it was those kind of little tiny decisions that are just delay the gratification now so that everything's okay down the line.